We're out here at Streets of Willow for the 2014 FR Shootout. We ran it pretty simply this year. It was open track, open lapping. Every entry just went out there whenever they wanted, got to run as many laps as they could get in. The idea was to get the fastest lap time, fastest lap time won. It was that simple. Track goes hot at 9 a.m., so let's go see it. For our 2014 FR shootout, we had 13 entries make their way up to Streets of Willow. Five make, six models, and out of those 13, six were boosted, all utilizing superchargers. Track conditions were dry, and therefore traction was pretty good throughout the day. My name is Martin Choi. Uh, I drive a 2012 370C. We added a supercharger, GTM, Road Tricks, running 10 PSI, almost 500 to the wheels. So that's new to me. The car hasn't been driven for about a year. This is actually my second FR shootout. I ran last year in NA class. And this year we're just scrambling to get the car ready and get it going. And now we've been testing with the tires, a lot, of, a lot of suspension tuning, tire pressure, disconnecting the rear sway bar. Um, I keep getting oversteer, then understeer, you know. So we're trying to fix each thing at a time. And some things are working, some are not. Every adjustment we make, we're going a little faster here and there. The cars are fast. Everyone's posting faster lap times, you know. The M3s are good. They've never been out here before. My buddy Amir, even though he's NA class, but he's fast, so I always want to make sure I keep, I keep at it with him, you know? Hi, my name is Tony Jackson. I'm with iBox Springs, and I'm competing in the FR shootout in my E46 M3. Uh, so far, the car is running really good, and just kind of get a feel for the tires. And um, I think we're putting on some good time so far, so I'm pretty happy with, what, with how everything's going. My car doesn't have a whole lot of power, I just have an intake and exhaust, but uh, I'm using our iBlock Multi-Pro R2 coilovers. It uh, keeps the car planted, it keeps the car controllable. But what works for me is having a slightly stiffer suspension in the front, or at least a damper setting, and, and backing off a little bit in the rear just to get the car to, uh, to push the way that I want, and using more throttle to kind of get the car to rotate the way that I want. You talk to any competitor here at the FR Shootout, and they'll tell you, going fast is great, but I gotta be able to stop this thing. Effective brakes is really where it's at. The ability to race with your competitor and be able to go deeper into the corner before you've got to apply your brakes is critical to shorter lap times. Brakes on normal passenger cars are sized right for those weight vehicles for what they're gonna be used for. Large brakes, on the other hand, have more surface area and can dissipate more heat, and that's what we're after. Sometimes they have holes drilled in them, or they'll have slots in them. The whole rotor itself is larger than a stock rotor, but it doesn't weigh as much because the outer portion might deal with the heat and has to be strong and steel, but the inner portion is usually an aluminum hub. It's strong, but it's light, taking off unsprung weight. My name is Mike King. I'm driving a 2014 Subaru BRZ. We have a Jackson Racing Supercharger on here, Tomei headers, tuned by Church Automotive Testing. Suspension's been slowly getting dialed in with the prototype valving, but we've been able to get all the power down. Uh, we don't have a wing or any arrow on the car, so it's a little bit looser than everybody else, but we're making the most of what we have. 
Uh, car's been rock solid today. Been keeping an eye on the temps, logging everything for our tuner, and we haven't been having any issues. We have three cars here with the Jackson Racing Supercharger. You saw Dave Carner earlier with the big wing on, and he's running a little bit faster than I am. I have a better suspension setup than the red FRS next to us, so I'm running a little bit faster than he is. So the level of work that's done to every car is pretty accurately reflected. The biggest thing that I've noticed is even though all three cars are forced induction, uh, they've been performing beautifully. We haven't had any problems. The power that these vehicles make is impressive, but we've got to get that power through the drive line and down to the ground effectively. There's a lot of different components that help us to do just that. Based on the power that our engine's making, the size of our vehicle, what it weighs, how we're gonna drive it, the way it's geared. There's a lot of different factors that play into having a well-rounded and competitive vehicle. One of the most important components on a rear-wheel drive car is that differential. The differential is what receives the power through the engine and transmission and transmits that power to the rear wheels. There's different styles. The differentials you might see in a passenger car are called an open diff, and they tend to favor one tire or another, not so with a limited slip. Just like its name, it doesn't allow for a loss of traction under certain circumstances. Now there's a lot of different styles of limited differentials out there. The common LSD style of maybe a 1.5 or a 2.0, a lot of it comes down to, does it apply most of its traction to both wheels on acceleration and deceleration? Or is it maybe just during acceleration and then it backs off the traction a little bit on deceleration to maybe favor one tire or the other. Quickly into the day, it became clear that the cars to keep up with were the S2Ks. The shop is Evasive Motorsports. We are located in Los Angeles, about 20 minutes south of downtown LA. And we uh, specialize in import, automotive tuning, and performance parts and sales. We actually have been working on s 2000s for about 10 years now, and this particular one you see right here, we've probably been working on for about two to three years. Um, before this, we had a, what we call version one, which is a blue version of our shop S2000s. Um, we learned a lot on that car as we built it throughout the years. Um, this is kind of just the second version, a better version of it. Aerodynamics is done all with uh, Voltex Aero, so the front bumper, splitter, side skirt, rear diffuser, wing, it's all Voltex. Uh, it has full interior, and it still runs on 91 pump gas, so you know, technically you can still drive it around, go to the gas station, and stuff like that. The engine is actually completely stock. The only thing we did was bolt on a HKS supercharger to up the power to about 340 to the wheels. Superchargers are a very effective method to add torque and horsepower to an engine but most often they're belt driven. The benefit of being belt driven is, as soon as the engine spins faster, the supercharger will start to spin faster. And that can give you an instant torque hit right off the bat, especially if you're using a positive displacement or root style supercharger. A root supercharger has the benefit of that instant boost. One of the downsides of a roots type supercharger is that it's usually located real close to the engine, and that can tend to cause heat soaking issues. A centrifugal supercharger really excels at top end. It takes a little while to build boost, but once it builds that boost, it comes on like a freight train in the top end. But one of the other benefits of a centrifugal supercharger is that they're usually mounted on some type of bracket system where it doesn't have as much heat soak off the engine. Every method of forced induction has pros and cons. And sometimes, depending on what the driver wants to do and the type of track conditions, you might build a vehicle with a certain type of forced induction to suit your needs. Um, the reason why we want the supercharger is because the power delivery is very similar to a naturally aspirated car, where the car is still very drivable. Uh, what S2000 really like is balance. And we feel that you know, a supercharger provides that type of balance as far as power output and just drivability. Um, the response is like an NA engine where you know, when you get on the gas, you have power instantly. It just sounds like an NA car with a lot of power, and that's exactly what we're going for. Our driver is Robert Walker. 
You guys didn't like the NWA music? No, that's good. No, we <laughs> like it. We just want money to pay for it. He's a good friend of ours, and he is not a professional driver. This is something he does on the side. We're not hiring professional drivers. These are guys that, you know, they go on weekends, go to the track, yet they're setting times that are comparable with professional drivers and race cars. And that's one of the coolest things about it. Hi, I'm Robert Walker, driver for Evasive Motorsports. Today we're here out with the Honda S2000, running the streets of Willow. Uh, it's been a great day, cars handling good. Well, everything needs to basically work together and balance out in order to put a, a really good lap time. Controlling the road movement, um, the timing, and also the, the actual suspension travel. Um, you don't want excessive travel, but you, have, you want enough ample travel to basically absorb all the bumps and uh, irregularities on the road. Um, so it's a fine balance, uh, and then everybody tries to meet that, that sweet spot, but it's very difficult. I think in terms of the field, there's a lot of new FR chassis out there, especially the FRS and the BRZ, so uh, they're out there putting a lot of great lap times as well. The S2000 is definitely one generation older, but it's still able to put, a, put down a good lap, and I think everything is competitive in terms of lap times. Jeff Ringer, I'm driving the uh, JMP E30. We have an E36 M3 motor in the car. Today's actually the first track day. It's a daily driver with air conditioning, uh, but we threw the Continental tires on. The E30 is kind of an older chassis, so it has a little older technology in the suspension, but, but it has a lot of torque because it has the 3.2 liter E36 M3 motor. At third gear, right out of the sweeper, it, it gets onto the straightaway really well. Toward the end of the day, after I knew I had my best time, and I put on a little drift show, and the car held a lot of angle. And uh, the old technology is great: no traction control, no analog brakes. You you got to really drive the car. Nothing's going to save you. So, I mean, some of these new cars are fun. There's no doubt about it. But uh, you know, you got to go back to the old school sometimes. This year's competition was dominated by the S2000. Between those three, they rounded up the top one, two, three spots on the podium. So it was a close battle throughout the day, and that was apparent when looking at the time difference between third and fourth, which was just two tenths of a second. On the German end, Amir's 1997 BMW M3 clocked the fastest time at 127.994. All right, that's a wrap for FR Shootout. Evasive wasn't the first time here. They brought the same S2000 they brought out last year. This time, though, they had a supercharger they were able to take the fastest lap time. So that's it, see you next time.
Yes, sir. What time did you run? Like uh, 35 seconds flat. Yeah, achieved such an amazing time. Electricity and passion. That's it. Those are the two ingredients. Electric passion. It's the name of my car, actually. <laughs>